so so I'll uh, uh, dock okay finally okay I was trying to wait on you, Doc. Yes. Welcome, Doc. Welcome, 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 welcome. Alive and well. <laughs> Alive and well. We have join us, joining us tonight, uh, Dr. Samaj. So, Dr. Samaj will, will um, introduce himself um, in, a, in a few minutes. But what I want to, I just want to welcome who has joined already. Our topic tonight, and it's and it's based on feedback we got from last week. Um, Doc, I, I'm not, I don't think you were there last week, but last week we had a discussion on um, remain, keeping, maintaining sex appeal um, during this COVID-19 period. Oh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that we don't have new people. My name is Sandra Samuels. I'm the CEO of uh, Totally Male Limited. Um, uh, I would call myself a grooming specialist, a male grooming specialist for the last 25 years. And I mean, I sit and I talk to my customers for the last 25 years. So I also have a male perspective on a, quite a number of um, topics. So tonight, based on last week's um, episode, what is what came out of last week's episode is that women may want to ask for certain things, but they don't know how. They don't know how to start the conversation. And when I went back to work, um, persons that joined but joined, you know, privately, they didn't want to come forward. They also would like to start a conversation. But I think we we are ill-equipped. Most of us are ill-equipped to start a conversation because we don't like drama. And so that's why I thought it would be a perfect um, way to segue you in, Doc, because I, this, is, this is your area. This is, you know, helping people to communicate. We, we hear every day that communication is the key to a successful relationship. But what does that really look like? Who taught us to communicate? Most of us grew up in a household with single parents. You know, I've been listening to a lot of the videos I spent some time um, in the last week listening to a lot of videos on relationships and um, just the whole, um, I don't want to, for want of a better word, lack of culture, culturizing where males are concerned. And the females too, mm -hmm. because we assume that, okay, we're just going to start a conversation and it's just going to go like that. No, it, it doesn't really work like that. You have to be able to um, get the, the person's attention without the drama, be able to bridge a conversation without getting the person's back up. And when I say person's back up, either the male or the female, because of both, both persons bring drama to the relationship. So before we start, I'd just like to introduce myself, um, introduce my guest, Dr. Samaj. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, Doc, and... Um, what is it that you do and um, why is it that, um, you know, you, you can bring, shed a, a different light on this, this, this conversation? Well, my name is Lekim Samaj. I'm a psychologist. Huh? Right. Um, but I work a lot with companies, organizations, but clearly people is what make up organizations. Huh? Absolutely. Uh, I, I am a transformation specialist. Whether you're transforming yourself, or, or transforming a nation. So whatever, because change is the hardest thing to deal with. It's the hardest thing. And even changing oneself. A lot of people, you know, make all kinds of uh, resolutions every year. Um, I, I, I used to go to Spartan, Jim. I used to see you there occasionally. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's before school. <laughs> school happened. And I said, excuse by the way. Let, let me let me turn off my um my yes my notification yes yeah yes yeah and usually at, at the gym January is crowded 
You're right. I usually just sort of wait it out. By the middle of February, you're back to normal. Right. Because all the made all kinds of resolutions and they pay up for the whole year. But guess what? It, by the end of January, boy, you're back to normal. Which the which easiest thing. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Is not change. If we have to bet change versus not change. Right. If, if it don't change. Look, the average person, 65 or 70,000 thoughts per day go through your head. But guess what? It's the same thoughts as yesterday and the day before. By the time you're age 35, 80% of what you do all day is based on habit. Wow. The simplest way, for example, look, you drive to Montego Bay, somebody call you, where you reach? You have to kind of wake up and say, oh, uh, and you look around a little bit, oh, I, I just passed Runaway Bay. Right. Because you are on autopilot. Right. So we live our life to a large extent on autopilot. On autopilot. Well, so now, when you say you're going to change now, you're going to do something different. Mm -hmm. Look, it's wishful thinking most of the time. And back to what you were saying before, most of us, the primary place we learn about relationship is in our own families. Absolutely. If you never see all your mother and father have an argument and don't talk for two days, and then when they get back together and how they kind of gently, then you really don't understand how this thing works. And, and, that, and that is a lot of us, especially in our Jamaican setup. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then the pop culture don't really help because the dance hall music gives you a whole other set of how these things work. Mm -hmm. And the R&B music is another set situation. Right. So all of these things, but the real thing, how do people work out their differences and people drift through relationships? Right. Something bothering their rock. And you never said nothing. You know the biggest problem? You get to a certain point and you've tolerated for so long. But you can't change what you tolerate. And then by the time it's, you get to speak about it, you're angry. Ah, uh, and yes. then, so how come I, can you never tell me that? How come all it? And all of a sudden you want drama. things change. All of a sudden you find a problem with me. Can you never say well, from day one? You never did. But, but guess what? what? Mm -hmm. It is said, you know, that Women expect men to change, but men expect women not to change. Meaning that when I met you, you were 127 pounds. Right. All right. Now, after three children, you are, you, you put on some weight. Like, you, 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 you put on some weight. You put on, you put some, on weight. some weight. I have heard men come to speak to me confidentially and say, boy, the way them wife look now, you know, they're really trying to find out to tell her that she needs to do something. Right. In, 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 in not feeling it, literally right. and figuratively. But then, right. now, the other side. Yes. The woman now, when you meet the man, you, you went you went to Caymanas Park because your friend tell you said, enough man go to Caymanas. <laughs> and then, after you get here now, ah, every Saturday you go to Caymanas. It's like your church is Our Lady of St. Caymanas. <laughs> <laughs> you see you meet me so then yeah. the drama starts you know, so, so, all right, so what we want to talk about then doc right we want to know where to start as adults I mean I was I, I was listening to um you, you have some some um some 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 videos um, called black love and they're basically on relationships and the on the own ne network and some others as well and we're talking about may being a male versus a man there's a difference you have grown males and then you have man and so yes. what they were saying was that a lot of us women are dealing with grown males because they never transitioned into becoming a man. And then also a lot of us women, and I'm speaking about myself because I grew up in a single parent home. However, I had the opportunity to, um, maybe not in an intimate setting, meaning very close to me, but I had examples around me. But that, 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 
seeing how that interaction between mommy and daddy and them sorting problems through love. I never got that experience. So now, when I want to now bring up to my significant other something that we consider touchy, number one, money, how to discuss money in the relationship, how to, ex how to um, explain what I want um, sexually, because I don't want, when I tell him what I want sexually, I say, so where you learn that from? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. who you talk to. When we did, yeah, you did start, you never uh, asked me for them things all of a sudden, right? Which may be because of the honeymoon phase, you know, you glaze over, you don't really want hurting feelings, but then it's a go on too long now, you have to talk about things then. Yes. So, what I want to know, Doc, at this stage, well, me personally, I sought help, psychological help. I don't shame to tell that I went to a psychiatrist or I went to a psychologist and I've been to you and I have sought the necessary help because I don't deal with certain things well. You know, I, 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 I tend to lock down when I have something touchy to talk about and I, I'm almost certain that is worldwide. I know that's not unique to me, unless we have been armed with the skill or have taken the time out to do something about it. I want you to kind of give us a little segue, how we start the conversation when we have difficult conversations to have. Because last week, you know, persons were saying, that boy, man still has said, them not do them thing that in, in 2020. I mean, we're talking about grooming now. You know, it is a hard sell. You know, I saw them grow. I mean, when you get to manhood, like seriously, are we still saying those things at, in 2020? When we have access to internet, we no longer have to search two leaves to go into an encyclopedia to learn. So yes. why are we still as adults, as educated adults still saying those things and how do we start a conversation without as i said to, to the to, to my significant other or a, a woman said to her husband in this lockdown period now now that everybody's slowed down and have time can we talk can you know if i said can we talk the buck raise up you know and mm -hmm. uh, we want no lord I want me to know. I want me to know. Right. Without it without you getting that 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 yes, that, that okay babes, you know, you know. All right, let's talk. You know, finally we have some time to talk. Why 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 can't it be like that? No? Or are some people you know, having that experience? But well, let me just back up a little bit. It's a long time now you, you wanted to do something like this. Absolutely. Like years ago, when you were on Braemar Mar one of those places where you had Absolutely. this place on the side, and you told me, yes, we want like a Friday night. We just come sit down and yeah, man. man because we, we don't want, we, want, we forget this thing. We want love, we, we want, and want to stop existing and start living. Yeah. <coughs> and one of the things that I, I wanted to do... Passionately. Because you know me and the person thing. <laughs> on one of my shows, I wanted to do a show, and I, in fact, I was going to involve you, yes, and 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 Chris, my trainer. You know, me ready and anytime, anytime. What the show is going to be? Mani pedi for men and weight training for women. <laughs> All right. We don't tend to, but you don't understand that. Yes, men mani pedi is also for men. Yeah, but I'm saying man not grow them way there. That's the, that was the, that, that was the talk last week. Man not grow them way there. Them say, uh, uh, man, man and feel rough. But we want to, we want to start the conversation. How conversation. do we start the conversation without everybody get tense? Yes. Uh, how, no. how do we get it across that what we really want is growth versus confrontation? Absolutely. Now, the, one of the first, well, one prerequisite that I, I usually say, have the first conversation with yourself. Right. Hmm? So become who you, want to, to, who you want to be with. 
Yeah, exactly. Because too many people, you know, you try to become someone to attract someone else. You, you attract who you are. So right. guess what? If at your core, you are a Jagabat, <laughs> don't be surprised if that's what you're attracting because right. you, what you have on the outside is, is a mask, you know. At yes. your core, it's who you are. So Hi, you, know you, you know, what I realize is critical. Every time somebody comes to see me about some really situation they're going through and what they need to do, you know, the most important thing to do, I listen to them. Right. As I listen, all I have to do most of the time is to repeat what they just told me. Why? They know what I'm have to do. Right. I'm talking about actually, here's where it starts, here's what happened. They know exactly what to do. But it's just to have somebody put it in the proper words for you. Right. Help you to sequence it and help you to rest. But guess what? They are now talking it through without the emotions. They're talking it through right. intellectually. But once the emotions kick in, you're in trouble. Yes. Because emotions generate more heat than light. Absolutely. The heat scorches and burns. The light illuminates. So how can we get this conversation without the scorch, without the heat? Huh? Yes. Next thing, there's an inverse relationship between emotions and solutions. Meaning that the heavier the emotions is the less solutions we come out, eh? Yes. And the loader you the more. But if you can con control the emotions, you get a lot more solutions coming out. So it's to but know isn't exactly. A, isn't a part of it being, even isn't a part of the defensive mechanism, a part of either you don't want to have a conversation, you, you, it, it, or, my experience is sometimes past history. So you bring up something last year, you remember the effects of when they bring up that topic last year. So you go into the conversation with that preconceived notion that is not he, he or she is not going to receive it well. Some um, Andrea just said, hi Andrea, Andrea just said, we need to go into the, relation, the, the, the conversation without the need to be right. I was it's listening to Red Table Talk and um, Jada and Will, um, for those who watch Red Table Talk. It, it's a very interesting program. They were saying that they have a, like a, a truth night, that the whole family can come together and anything you say in that conversation stays there. But what I, when, when, when I was watching the whole scenario, what I realized it requires is trust. And I think we have a big problem with trust. So if I say something in that conversation, you're going to bring it up all next month this time, you remember when you did say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. Doc? How can we override that? How can we get okay, past but, that? Remember, part of that is called unfair fighting. Right. When you're fighting, one of the rules about fighting between man and woman is that you have to stick to the topic. Yes. Stick to the topic. Don't try to try all the cases in one sitting. Right. And you when somebody starts to get cornered in a reasoning, then they shift the boundary. But remember, you did so and so and so and so and so and so. That's on. Don't don't. They have to set up. You have to set up boundaries. We're not going to. We're not going to go there. So. No, no, we're dealing with this at this time. Right. We're dealing with because you can easily, easily once you start to feel uncomfortable, you shift the boundaries. Flight, 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 fight or flight. Fight or flight, exactly. Yes. And especially if you can't fight them, then you will run away from it by shifting the boundaries. Right. Now, the other thing is that one of, the, one of the ground rules you have to be admit even to yourself first. Better to be kind than to be right. Uh, yes, nice. I, I like that. Tweetable moment. To be right. Yes. Yeah, because the way you say something, now, one of the things that I try to practice 
I said, I said try, not always successful, is that the more tense, the more emotional the issues are, is the slower I speak. Yes. The calmer I get. Because yes. if I can automatically control that, so we're no. not going to start shouting. At least I am not going to start shouting. I'm not going to start getting down. So Hold on a minute now. Someone, they, they wanted to know. Some people just joining. The initial question is, now that we have downtime in COVID-19, we would like to have conversation with our spouses about, you know, what we consider to be touchy topics. Um, what we want in the bedroom, finances, what, you know, what has been bugging us for a long time, but with, without the drama. So that's what we are trying to get to. And, and Dr. Samaj is a psychologist and he's helping us to, you know, approach this conversation in the right way. So continue, Doc. Okay. And as we say, one of the first thing, have the conversations first with yourself. Right. Have it with yourself. So you have talked it through with yourself. You have, and it's also, it's also useful. Can you talk to somebody, a friend, one of the wisest friends, not just any, any friend, a wise friend who can give you good counsel? Because yeah. some of your friends not useful at all. Right. You're right, but you're running. Run yes, but you're so, uh, no, so man stay. No, you don't need that. Somebody who will listen to both sides and tell them, Sandra, you know, you're wrong. Right. You should have apologize to the man, you know. So somebody who will do that. But before you venture into the conversation, because you have to prepare yourself for it, all right? So we start, right. have the conversation with yourself. Because mm -hmm. I know people know what the right things are. One of the things I also ask persons to do, you know, and this isn't any kind of conflict, hard conversation. Especially after they have told me what happened. Huh? I said, pretend that what you did a while ago was show me a video. Right. Play your back ways. And I want you to stop it at a point where you can admit that if you had done something different at this point, where you reached today wouldn't have happened. So that... Many times in a personal situation, you know, the person will go back to, you know, when, when we first met and so on. So I never said something. I never set the limits. I never said I didn't really want to do so. So I didn't, you never make things clear. Most right. times when people say, I love you, what you give the person is a blank check. Right. You don't define what you mean, I love, you know, is when they fill out the check and when they try to go cash it. The real and then uh oh oh that wasn't in your love bank. It's not that you mean by love. Mm -hmm. So we don't have we start off not having honest conversations. Somebody you know, just like, said um nothing kills a conversation faster than accusations. So absolutely. should you leave the accusations out of it and just stick to the topic? Well, as opposed to accusations, you know, it's better for you to ask questions. Right. Christian, so to, to eliminate same. the confusion. Yeah. And the confusion. Just, just, as opposed to a, where you would have put an accusation, ask a question. Right. So for example, but, but why why do you why do you do this? Right. Why did you uh, the, the word all, always is a dangerous word. Why do you always because that is never really true? Right. Why do you do so? Let it be a question and give the person a chance to because and as the person, one of the most important things to do either side is to listen because you just just imagine yourself just watching people go through these conversations eventually each one trying to out, out shout the other one each yes one to talk uh, and, and doc one. i just said listen let us clarify what listening is because some of us listen to respond not listen to hear person so is talking the lips is move the lips are moving but you are planning a response before the person even finishes, because you want, first of all, you want to be right, and you want to get the point across. So, speak and a little bit about active listening. But sometimes it's, it's, it's worse than you just said. It's not listen to respond, it's listen to react. Right. Reaction is, a, is, a, is almost a, is a, is a auto process, whereas a, a response would have been a good thing. Right. But first of all, listen to understand, listen to appreciate. Because one of the worst things in a relationship, in a discussion, is this thing called invalidation. Yes. You in, 
In fact, you tell the person, classic case. The man says, the woman says, but I don't really feel loved, you know. I don't really feel love. I don't feel like you love me. Well, I mean, I love you. I'm gonna buy you. I'm gonna buy you a car. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna buy flowers the other day. But yes. her love, our love language is appreciation and or something else. She has a different love Absolutely. language. So mm -hmm. by him automatically saying now that he is invalidating her, meaning that she has no right to feel that way. Absolutely. So first of all, we have to. We can't invalidate each other. If he's saying to you, boy, but me, 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 like, you just throw up yourself, you know, and you, women didn't meet you, or you did sexy and thing, and, and then you know, get defensive and say, but what do you expect from me? But work all day, huh? but by the time you come home, I'm tired. Oh, wait, what do you do for it? So that it goes south from there. Because what is he trying to say? He's trying to say the woman that he met. Not right. He, he, he hasn't seen her in a while. And you see, once you get to that point, you, you can't have these conversations. And there's a reason why she's not there because listen, maybe you, you could have given me a little more help. Huh? When you come home, the first thing you do, you sit down and you start watch TV and so on and thing. Mm -hmm. And you don't ask how my day was. You don't offer to help and so on. By the time me reach the bed, me dead. Right. Right. So again, uh, uh, way, my John is saying, um, what should I do if he actually breaks the trust by bringing up back? The conversation after we have had something, I guess we had a conversation before, and then keep on bringing it up back. How, how Again, can you agree to end it here? It comes back to are, trust, right? Yeah, but this morning, those are one of the most dangerous ground rules for fighting. Let's call it fighting. Yeah. You have to stay within the boundaries of the road. And bringing up old issues and so on is not fear. It's not fear. Deal yeah. with the issue or deal there because you'll never you'll never resolve anything. But when you did so and so, no, let's deal with this here now. Let's see if we can resolve this one, and then we set a time and deal with the other one. Because once you keep going back to that and keep back to that, it's a way of avoiding dealing with this. Yes, because it's that and that and that. Now, what we're talking about is not something that's necessarily easy, you know. Because whenever I see a couple. The hardest things to speak to both of them at the same time. Yes. Because but why is that, that no is that because of past hurts? Is that because the, the, the trust issue mm -hmm. if one person has moved on? Because I am listening, because as you know, I'm a single person, right? And I've been hearing everywhere. Lord, people oh forget divorce, people not getting along. So what was happening all along? I mean, yes, I know people are busy. I mean, I'm not naive. But what has been happening that no, because we are forced to stay together, we can't coexist in the same space? Is it, does it mean that I, I don't really know you? Mm -hmm. Jada, Jada actually said that about Will. She has been married for over 20 years. And she said she realized in COVID because... They normally be very busy, as you can well imagine. She says she don't know him. How's that possible, Doc? There are many people who are living parallel lives. Oh, and, and by parallel living. lives, you mean? They're, they're in the same house, but they're living two separate lives. So, for example, now, by the time he gets home, remember that, you know, he stops to socialize. Mm -hmm. He's on the phone, and he's, she's doing the same thing. So at a certain point, people give up on each other. They concede defeat. One of my favorite so songs. So they just coexist, co-parent, or co-hosting. Because yes. mm -hmm. some, some houses are empty nesters. So they just there's co-host it because they own the house together. And they just go through life like that, Doc. I don't understand that. Yeah, that night song sums it up. Neither one of us want to be the one to say goodbye. Because there's a, there's a, there's a cost for the breakup now. So we'll okay. just find a way to go and coexist. And we'll go through the motions that even your friends may see you as the, you know, ideal of, couple. Right? They don't understand how past get them going. Because sometimes it is harder to try to resolve these things. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when, especially when men, well, I don't know. You, you mentioned something earlier about male versus man. 
Yes. Hold on destruction because a lot of males don't make it to manhood. Right. I, That's my, I remember you that. saying that most men don't get it past, what was it, 12? What was it again? 17. Jesus. 17. 13. No, 17. Oh, 17. No, that's frightening. That's frightening. They don't, get, really they don't make it past 17, Doc. Seriously, that is, that is real, real something, sir. The difference between males and men, males have more expensive toys than boys. Oh. They, they have wow. expensive toys. And so, for example, even their partner can be a toy. Ow. A life is a toy. They don't really, it's not the same thing as a man is a different thing. Yes. Male is defined um, by external um, genital yes. and hormone institutions. Yes. So that we have a women by definition, you have to make a transition. Your life gives you a cue that you're yes. a woman now and you start to behave differently. But again, depends on how a male is socialized. He doesn't yes. necessarily make that transition. So yes. now, when you with a male and you're trying to groom him to be a man and you want him to behave in a particular way. Now, you excuse a lot of the problems in the early part of the relationship. Why? Why, why do we do that? Well, you love him and maybe you thought it was cute and you thought it was interesting and but you saw the problems 90% of the time, the problems that you're now grappling with, you saw it in the first month of meeting the person. That is true. No, no. That is true. That is true, but, so, but we excuse it. We, we, oh, we think we can fix it. Women believe they can fix men. They can change them. Yeah. It only got harder. And you see, the longer you put off talking about it, but hold on, I saw you meet me, you know. You meet me as a big man, you know. Yeah. You, you know, I said, and it's harder for you to say, yes, listen, I was uncomfortable from day one, tell you the truth. But I didn't. I honestly believe that you no, don't say it, don't say it, I thought you would have grew up. If you say so no, the a war. argument done. War, a yeah. War, you know. So, so, you in, so in the conversation, and the truth is if you live long enough with a person, you know what triggers them. They try to stay as best as possible away from those trigger words. Trigger, trigger words, the yes. Trigger anger. Because really and truly what you're trying to accomplish is a solution. And yes. happiness in the household, really. So you need to, but so you have some people in the dark. You're having a constructive conversation, you know. But because either they don't see anything wrong with themselves, or because you brought on yourself and not complaining from earlier. How do you get beyond that if you are stuck and you're married to this man? Is that your boyfriend? You're married to him. You ask to go to counseling, him not interested because nothing are, not are wrong with me. Me, me, me. Good, and you have the problem because the girls that were me did have before or the women that me had had before, not, no, them never find fault with me. And you have the fault because. You think say so because you do this and you that all your private earn more money or whatever. You think you you know. You 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 too you too picky. Or you too miserable. Either on side, average, either side. I mean, male or female, because men tell me the same thing too. Yeah. I mean, we are humans on only. Women going through this, but men go through the same thing. On the average, it takes a couple six years before they decide to seek help. Six wow. years. Because you understand how much damage is done during that time. You understand yes, how sir. hard it gets. So again, don't give up. You start because it is very hard for two of you to work it out. Because yes. oftentimes, it, it, just imagine this is two, two men on the road fighting and the kind of damage they do to each other. But if they were fighting in the presence of a referee, somebody would part the fight. Somebody right. would say, fight for And you get that little chance to catch your breath. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of the things I said earlier, you know, is if you can get some counsel from some wise person, you know, mm -hmm. or some, this is a kind of ticklish one, but sometimes talk to the persons, a good friend of theirs. Mm -hmm. You can't talk to your man. You can't talk to your friend. 
Yes, but I have done up. that. I have done that now. Let me, let, me, let, let me just go there. I have done that. What I find is that men don't want to have that conversation with them, Bridget. Very few. I, I, I mean, I probably know two who would do that. But yes. the majority of men, they just want to keep the thing on the surface. They don't want to get, according to them, get into your life. They don't want to speak about stuff. If, even when somebody is being abusive, I've seen where... Especially they, when someone being abusive. Yeah. Yes, yes, they don't want to get involved. And it's, it's almost as if they take an ostrich approach to the whole situation. So how, we have do, to you, how do you navigate have, that? No, we have to make it clear. A relationship, paradoxically, is not totally a private. It exists within a community. Mm. Mm. You have, you have so for example, let, let's just talk about a worst case scenario. When a woman talks to me about she's in a, a domestic abusive state, the mm. first thing I ask her, you don't have no half mad brother. <laughs> you don't have no uncle, the uncle will come back from prison and afraid to go back again. Because the, that's, that's, unless she can, yeah, she can tell her uncle or tell her brother, you know, I make sure that my daughters, for them to make sure anybody before they got married and so on, I mean, make themselves, as you describe your father, tell him he's armed and ignorant. <laughs> and the first time I meet the prospective husbands, I tell them I am armed and ignorant. I ask questions after you mm -hmm. heard my daughter, but hide. So, so that's a part of your life. It's a part of who you are. So when you... Yeah, but that's father, dog. That's father. That's easier. But no, it's I, easier. Am, I am telling you, I am, I am on more than one occasion because even, even, okay, even with the, my, my husband's best man, my ex-husband's best man, when at the first sign of trouble, I say, Bridget, you stand up to take an oath up on the altar there to assist when trouble starts. He said, boy, you know, I'm not really, that's not really my thing. So when people are even getting married, who you select as best man is also important. Absolutely. Best man are, are, are your, 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 um, your, 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 your made of honor. Because we, we, we take these, we take these oaths or these promises, make these promises, and when time come and you can't manage and say, Bridgerine, talk to him for me now because I have done all the talking that I can talk and it, it not make sense. Yes. Be allowed. Be well, allowed. Again, but, you know, this, this conversation we're having here, these are the kinds of national conversations that must be had because most yeah. people context mm -hmm. where they've had even in terms of that is what your best man is that's what your maid of honor is it, these are the people this, it's not decoration relationships exist in a context i remember a woman came to me some years ago and she was telling me how things have soured mm -hmm. in her marriage literally the word she used to describe it is that her husband she feel like them is roommate. Mm -hmm. Which room? Which there's a lot of. Yeah. No. She, uh, so you, you, you just talk to him to me now. Because it basically, I think he's a decent man. I'm thinking, but everything. I called him as a boss. We want to have a conversation with you. And to preface the conversation, I'm going to play a tune for you. Mm -hmm. I think of my phone. You, and I draw Luther Vandross by me a rose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you know, she went and, and by me a call me from work. Just and just describe what she wants. So, so okay, boss, your wife talk to me. And say, mm -hmm. this, is, this is what she wish to tell you. Mm -hmm. Because she's not she here. She's room mm -hmm. Coming from me. Said, but me, I work hard on my busy. But Mr. Boss, I'm provided in his head, provided means that he's taking care of her. 
like, yeah, the financial needs and so on. Thing. So that's why I'm saying that it is not a bad idea. No, if you cannot talk to a close personal friend of the family, of the two of you, and the person object, then we say, yeah, bigger problems. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> because it's a bigger problem you're having now. Yes. That is the cornerstone of domestic violence, you know. The person locks you off from friends and family, and nobody must know what is happening in, the, in your life, so mm -hmm. that whatever, you have to just hug it up. And if you're supposed to feel guilty that you dare talk to somebody. Because you may when you say, Yeah, but you know, Doc, in sometimes you hear some counseling, even when you're getting married, about um, you and your husband must sit down and work it out. And what is that? Don't take tears out of the street. And you have a whole, you have a whole slew of things, you know? You must deal with it. What happened in the bedroom? Stay in the bedroom. What what happened in the house? Stay in the house. You know that uh, what, what, uh, when 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 what when man and woman had lock pump pillow. All kind of different sayings. So women are don't want to whether is offend the man or whatever, and so she suffers silently or not so silently. She but finally anyway, come on. Anyway, Marga, it pop. Anyway, Marga, it pop. So eventually it will pop. And see, or, or you get to a situation where both of you literally just become roommates and you coexist and you just, because the effort required to fix it is harder. So I'm saying yeah. that you must have the conversation. If you don't have the conversation, you know, you know, the ultimate thing, you're going to be having a conversation in court. At the, at the divorce court. Yes, or through your lawyers. Mm -hmm. But long distance before you get there, one of the things that I, I automatically, I like to take up for men. Because people don't usually, women get a lot of advice, but men don't get, when I hear a man talking foolish and I tell him something, I say, boss, let me tell you one thing. The biggest regret a man has in life is looking is being old and looking back and say, you know, I made a good woman slip through my mm -hmm. hand because mm -hmm. of my damn bitches. All right? So mm -hmm. that's many times a wake up call what I can share with a man. Because what he has done and what he's doing. Beyond the magazine says the do. women speak but the men stay quiet. Yeah. Yeah. So that the conversation, now if we can we said a couple of things. Avoid the trigger words. Mm -hmm. no? Avoid the trigger words. So, for example, when you're telling me, boy, you, you sound just like my mother. Or just like your father. Yeah. You sound. And then you're understanding that. And then when there is something that was a well-established behavior that you tolerated mm -hmm. for many, many years. Many years. So you have to say, listen, I have... And first of all, you have to take your part of the blame. Go to my side. Yes, I agree. I took, have to take part of the blame. Because, yes, from day one, I took on the biggest part of this. Every, every shortcoming you had, I cover for you. Right. Everything you're supposed to do, I cover for you. But guess what? We can't do that no more. We can't do that no more. We have to do a thing. How, again... A woman shared a situation with me with that interesting situation. She was more financially secure than her partner. Right. So she arranged, she will carry these bills. Right. She will carry this. And the one bill he had was to pay the light bill. Yes. And the third time, our helper called her at the bank and said, Miss. The GPS man is here, you know, from cut off the light, you know. Oh, Jesus. But that, the husband was supposed to, him saying, Peter. And her next thing, she said, oh, no, no, no. She called him and she said, listen, I'm asking you to go by the house and take all your things out. Mm -hmm. When I come home, I know that we have the light, but mm -hmm. I don't want to see, to see the light. I don't, I don't want to see you in the house. Mm -hmm. it came one bill. This is the third time the light cut off. 
Because he does not. The he one he pillar not. she does that is the situation where a man does not care. That's not where his priority lies. Well, because she had done so much so often, he now assumes she would do everything forever. Is that the and fault so, of the woman or is that the fault of the man for accepting that? Well, I put both of them because the woman, first of all, I as a man would not put myself in that situation. Right. All right? But uh, many women give men the option to be responsible. And you said, no, I will take up that. I will do this. And you, having done so much, asking so little in return, it is not believed you can do everything for nothing. So sometimes, that's why I'm saying one of the things, you know, where the problems are, walk back through the problem and ask myself, what could I have done earlier in this relationship so it wouldn't get to this point? Yes. So you, you're a part of it. So say, listen, we're talking about money now. I admit that I was wrong by I assuming to take on all the financial burden. My assumption is with time, you will take a little piece here, a little piece here, a little piece there. You have to take none. Right. And you have, so that you, you admit, so my, my, I was wrong. I should have made sure we live within our collective means. I shouldn't impose my standards on you. So you own that. Let us start over now. Mm -hmm. Let us not live within our collective means. All right? You have $2. I'll put my $2 to it. And we have $4 to live on. How are we going to work on that now? Now, all of a sudden, now, it may start. But, but, but you have more than $2. You have six. No, no. Yes, I have. But make us see how we go. Yeah. Because it's we. You, you, you reframe the conversation. If it's to do with the intimacy, oftentimes, no follow a man lie. I don't know, pretend. <laughs> and you know, it's the And yep. if you don't, uh, you ever, you ever see the, you, uh, all of us saw the movie Smile Orange. Yes. You, you go way yes, back. I did. No, it, it came on the other day. Last week. Yeah. And yes. There's on a TV one that's seen in it. I think it's in Smile Orange. Yeah. When, the woman explained to the man that you know, I've never been sexually satisfied. You know? Never. We are talking about the fourth time I breed you. Right. I breed you. So, you know, I said, a lot of men are in that category of worker. <laughs> you never said anything about what is your level of satisfaction. What yes, you but need. I've also heard that, that sometimes if you bring up the conversation, let's say we are married for married or in a relationship for five, six years. As you say, for whatever reason, she didn't complain before. But whether she's now well-read or she go watch a movie or she watch Oprah or whatever, and she wants to try something new, you're, or sometimes they come into the relationship having, bringing in, to the into your into the bedroom, what they used to do with the girl before you, or the woman before you, and assume that you this is what you like. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, you didn't say, "Boy, I didn't like it." But then you can't manage it no more, so you bring it up and say, "Boy, I don't like it." Then you're now being accused of either having a man. These are real situations. Or, or who you are talk to, or which girlfriend I mislead you, them not have, you know, you know, see them, them have any man, you have man, you have man where I take care of you, you have man, this, these are some of the situations, though. How does it change? What, no, again, I'm saying you can't change what you tolerate. So that, you have to admit but that so you, you're you're telling, me, you're telling me that I can't change my mind after a while, though? No, no, but again, having tolerated it, it is harder to change it. So one has to, again, admit your own responsibility. Listen. Absolutely. And, that's, I, and, 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 and I am accepting my responsibility. So that's why now exactly. COVID time slow down. We have time now to talk. So no, that's what I'm saying. I, I said, boy, you know, babes, you know, you know, we've been going like two shipping in the night. We need to sit down and talk and review some things. As I said last week, 
even I mean computer needs to upgrade, everything needs to upgrade. Why sexual uh, why your sexuality can't upgrade? And is that a problem? How about this? If we play as opposed to put it in an accusatory manner, how about if we start by saying, listen, let us start playing some games, huh? Where you I'm going to guess Hi, Rick. what each what each part of your body, mm -hmm. what you like. You go and tell me, you know how you know this game where you, you, you play is a kind of hiding game. And you say you're cold, the person trying to look for something, and you say, No, you're getting cold. You're getting oh, cold. that hold on, hold on. Um, somebody says it's your tone and uh, the tone you use in bringing up the deficiencies. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. Let us couch it in. Listen, let us use this time to, to, rede to rediscover each other. So that I want to rediscover your body and all the things that you like, mm -hmm. and you bring this me to rediscover my body and all the things. And I will tell you when you're getting warm and when you're getting cold. So I want, it, I want, it. but but from him start with your toe. You ever say you're hot, you're hot, you're hot. <laughs> right? Because you know, and then it may not go past it, but me never know so you like your toe. Me never so you know, so that even make it a game. Right. If not, you could start that same conversation. Like, you do the same thing every night, the same way. Da, da, da. No. Let us have a little, let us start a game during this week, all right? And then I want to rediscover your body, every inch of your body. Mm -hmm. and you okay, to... hold on, hold on. Now. So we're at 9.55, and the, the, the conversation just start get juicy. It's going to cut off at one hour. So if it ends, we're going to try and come on back so we can get an, at least some more time because this, this conversation is just now kicking in and it's getting very juicy so let us talk until it finishes because i also want for you to let them know where they can find it so they can so those out there who are having a challenge can call make an appointment with you and you know so that they can because we're really talking about you know living our best lives now because doc look 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 COVID-19 just come in, so, and just change your life, so. It don't make sense to just go along, go along, go along, go along, go along, so, um, um, Doc, and, you know, not living your life to the fullest of, you know, of, the, of its potential. You want to live happy. You want to live passionately. You want to get what you want out of life. You want fulfillment and that kind of thing. So, you know, I am, I, I am, all for change, as you know. You know, my business is in the grooming of men and stuff. And, and we're not just talking about body. We're talking about mind and body and soul. We're taking a holistic approach. So what we want to do to share in, in, in you know, I mean, this is worldwide, but we're talking about Jamaica right now. We need to get past just existing. But, you know, one of the theme for COVID, you know, is reset. Reset and reboot. The whole universe is being reset and reboot. So yes. why not just reboot and reset everything? Let us put everything Start on the table over. and say that listen, are we happy with this? Let, let us evaluate every right. aspect. You know, would would that be such an adult conversation, Doc? That would be such an adult important. lovely conversation. The alternative is to go drifting through the world, just keep drifting through, drifting. and a lot of people keep drifting through life. Ultimately, you reach a point, you realize you end up at a point where that's not where you were heading, you know, but you end up there and you accept it. So that use the theme now, reset and reboot and right. recharge. And recharge. Yes, Doc. Yes, Doc. Total renewal, Janet. Yes. Recharge. But and you have to re okay, and if one person, if one person has checked out, so let's say we want to start the conversation, and that person says, mm, "Not interested." How do you deal with that? I am a firm believer that sometimes somebody comes into your life for a reason, huh? sometimes for a season. Really, forever, you can do badly by yourself. Absolutely. So, so, if you if you aren't willing to let that be one of the option, 
if you want to just keep continue drifting through life with a, a unexamined life and so on, and the person know that it don't. But if you make it clear, I have known individuals who right within this COVID circumstances emerged, and it became clear that one party had been lying and misrepresented themselves in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, to start over again and all of that, mm -hmm. if you're not willing, don't start, don't, don't start the conversation then. 20, 25 yeah. seconds remaining. So we soon time out. So um, folks, we're going to just go into another, when it cuts off, we're gonna come back. So don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. More juice, more juicy information coming. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs>